Welcome back to Real Estate 101. Today we're going to continue our discussion on employment law and talk a little bit about employee rights in the workplace with disabilities. And I'm pleased to be joined once again by Marty Robinovich of Devery Smith Frank LLP. Marty, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me back, Joe. Okay, Marty, so what are the rights of an employee that have a disability? An employee with a disability is entitled to have that disability accommodated by their employer. So an employer is not permitted to discriminate or treat diff differently an employee because of that disability. And what are some examples of some of these disabilities? Well, a disability could be physical. So for example, an employee may have a back injury which prevents them from doing heavy lifting. A disability uh, could also be uh, a mental or developmental disorder and it would also include a learning disability. All right, so what steps should an employer take after an employee reveals that they may have a disability? Well, the employer should obtain supporting medical documentation from the employee, which sets out uh, the nature of the restrictions or accommodations that that disability would require. The employer should also take the time to review the, the medical documentation, speak to the, the employee, about uh, possible accommodations, and if necessary, speak to the employee's doctors to ensure that an appropriate accommodation is, uh, is carried out. Now you talked about the duty to accommodate. What is the duty to accommodate? What we mean by the duty to accommodate is the employer's obligation to make special or alternate arrangements for an employee with a disability to ensure that that employee is able to carry out the basic functions of their job. Okay, so when is the duty to accommodate? When is that triggered? The duty to accommodate is triggered when the employee reveals to their employer that they have a disability and provides medical documentation which would support the accommodation or restriction required. Okay, so what are some examples of accommodations that employers take uh, that you've seen? Well, uh, in the case of an employee with a back injury, for example, uh, the employer may have to implement an accommodation in which that employee uh, is not required to perform heavy lifting. Another example of an accommodation would be providing documents in Braille for an employee who is visually impaired. And finally, uh, if you had an employee who was not able to sit for extended periods of time, the employer could provide a standing workstation to permit the employee uh, to do their job while standing. Are there any limits on an employer's duty to accommodate? The employer's duty to accommodate an employee with a disability is not unlimited. In fact, the duty to accommodate ends up to the point of undue hardship or an undue burden faced by the employer. If an employer thinks that a particular accommodation is causing it an undue hardship or undue burden, the employer would have the burden of proving that in court. Now, in Canada, the proportionality approach is used to determine whether or not an employer has in fact uh, been subjected to an undue burden. So it's not sufficient for the employer to simply say that it has faced some harm, but the degree of harm must be excessive or disproportionate. Some of the factors that the courts will look at are things like extra costs that the employer would incur. For example, the cost of hiring extra employees to perform certain job tasks that the disabled employee can no longer carry out. And workplace morale. So for example, if other employees are performing too much extra work and their morale has been decreased, the courts will take this into account in assessing whether or not the employer has faced an undue burden. Okay, Marty, so a term that I've often heard uh, in relation to these scenarios is frustration of contract. What is that? A contract is frustrated if it becomes incapable of being performed as a result of unforeseen circumstances arising. Now, in these sorts of scenarios that we've been talking about, about accommodating employees with disabilities, 
This can come up if an employee with a disability is not able to work for an extended period of time. So the test is whether the employee is going to be able to return to work and perform the essential tasks of their job within the foreseeable future. So if the medical evidence suggests that the employee is going to be able to return to work within the foreseeable future, then the employment contract is not frustrated and it would continue. However, if the medical evidence suggests that this employee is not going to be able to return to work within the foreseeable future, the employment contract would be frustrated and the employment relationship would come to an end. Okay, so what steps can an employee take if they feel that uh, the employer hasn't properly addressed or tried to accommodate their disability? Well, the employee could bring a human rights claim against the employer for discrimination based on disability. And if an employee is thinking of doing that, I would highly suggest that they consult a human rights lawyer. All right, Marty, so for today's final question, what steps can an employer take um, to protect themselves from litigation uh, because of an employee-related disability? Well, the employer should start by uh, obtaining uh, the appropriate medical documentation to really get a sense of what an appropriate accommodation would be. The employer should maintain an open line of communication with the employee about uh, about the restrictions or the accommodations that are required. The employee, again, should uh, speak to the employee's physicians uh, if necessary. And finally, a good thing uh, for employers would be to have policies in place which address accommodating employees with uh, disabilities. All right, Marty, good stuff. I want to thank you very much for coming on today's show, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again in the future. Thanks very much for having me. So if you're having any human rights issue in the workplace, get in contact with Marty Rabinovich of Devery Smith Frank, LLP. I'm your host, Joe Tresera. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.